Welcome to Canon's Redline Challenge. This red line challenge is about finding light in the dark. The dark is really an amazing playground to develop new techniques, try out stuff and really be creative. Shooting in the dark can of course be challenging, but once you've understood the fundamental idea of how photography works, you can go out and get great results and it's so much fun to do that. <laughs> In this film, I want to show you how you can use the shutter speed to create amazing images when the light is getting low. Woohoo! We got it! Shutter speed. It's the time between when the shutter opens and when it closes. This time is your place for your creativity. Because I'm an action sport photographer, I'm more or less on the short side of the shutter speed to freeze the action. But from time to time, I experiment with longer shutter speed. With the long exposure, you have the time to create really the atmosphere in your images. We were in a ghost town in the US. I did a 15 minute exposure with a snowboarder jumping through my frame. I was freezing the action with the flashes and then just left the camera there for 15 minutes with an open shutter to get those star trails. I was standing there alone by myself in complete darkness. You just see the red light at your camera blinking. The image pops out like on the display and you're like, whoa! The satellite dish. Still one of my favorite action shots, but I had one problem. I didn't manage to get any light in the dish itself. The only way I could make light in that dish was with a longer shutter speed. So I went, I think, three, four seconds. The moon that was pretty bright behind the clouds and it was just giving it enough light onto the dish over those four seconds. You can see the dish, you can see the structures in there. I thought it was so cool to have like a four second exposure and get all the details in there. Right now I'm heading towards one of my favorite locations and we're gonna try some portraits, gonna try some landscape images and we're gonna see how the shutter speed will affect each of those images. First up, let's see how a portrait looks here. For me, I, I really like the soft light on portraits. A soft light comes from a, a bigger area of light. So the wider my softbox is, the softer the light is on my model. I'm gonna show you a great tip how you can simulate the same look just by using your phone. The plan right now is to do like a six or seven second long time exposure. The cell phone has like a small light source. It's pretty harsh normally, but you can use the long shutter to paint with that light source. And with painting in a wider area, you create a look that is very similar to a bigger softbox. Unfortunately, everything was white around me and I was wearing black, so you can still see my clothing, but I, I really like it and gives a little, yeah, special atmosphere to the image. So the next shot will be a long time exposure and we're gonna do a light painting with those flashlights. More to the right? Ah, that looks good. Landscape photography is really a cool playground for long time exposures. You can just light up the areas in your image that you want to show. You can leave the other stuff that you don't want to show in the shadow. And that's something you cannot do during day photography. Move your light source to the left, the flashlight. So in this case, I asked two of my friends to just help me a little bit and to light up the hill. Of course, you can do this by yourself, but it's easier if you ask somebody to help you. Auf die Plätze, fertig, los. We filled in the, the shadows a bit more with a bluer light source, and then we had like a flashlight from the right hand that didn't move too much. So we got like a glowing hill in, in a very atmospheric background. Now let's get a little bit more ambitious. We're gonna light it up with the drone, put some lights on the drone, do like a long time exposure. It's gonna be interesting, still snowing, so I hope it won't crash. 
when you're lighting up a landscape with a drone, you don't really understand where the light is coming from. It pretty much looks like if you would light up that whole area with a huge softbox hovering above your landscape. And that's really cool for me. One really cool thing about uh, flying with the drone and this camera is that back in the days we had to guess a little bit how long the exposure would be, but now you can pretty much see straight away how your image will look. That's so cool. Actually, it's just a pile of snow. And uh, with this technique, I really can create a cool image out of pretty much nothing. We've come back to the gravel pit and all the snow has melted. Actually, I thought, oh my God, where's all the snow? It looked so beautiful the last time, but it has left those puddles of water around. And I think I have an idea. I want to fly the drone above the hill so it creates like a, a light circle. And as a bonus, I'm going to add a powerful flash behind the hill with a blue paper on and it will just fire a strong flash and hopefully we can create like a bluish halo around the hill. Yeah, I think we need to lower the drone lights because it was a little bit bright. Okay, one more circle. Got it! It's so cool to see the reflection and the halo and the red light above the hill and yeah, really like the shot. So I have shown you a couple of my favorite techniques of the slow shutter. I think now it's time for you to go out, experiment, try new things, fail, learn from the mistakes. Most importantly, always have fun. But remember, stay safe and shoot within the guidelines of where you live. This is Canon's Redline Challenge. Get out there, get creative, and show us how you can master the light in the dark. <laughs>